So the tournament leaderboard is live. Uh, the free registration is open. It is live. And these are the three models that we're going to be doing. And so if you're interested in participating in the tournament, what you're going to do is go to twotalltoby.com, log in, log into your account. Make sure that in your profile, you take the time to declare what your country is and what your CAD system is. So currently I'm logged in as Nikola Tesla. This is one of my side user accounts. And I'm going to say that my CAD system is SolidWorks. And uh, let's save those changes so that that updates. And then let's go back to twotalltoby.com slash tournaments. Here's the website, twotalltoby.com slash tournaments. I'm gonna click register here. It's a big purple button in the middle. And uh, here we can see that we can compete. Here it is, uh, how to enter, how to qualify. Uh, here's a video, how to qualify. And then click here for the 2024 World Championship Tournament drawings. So we click here. We see we've got this first drawing, the slip bracket. We've got this second drawing, the uh, offset U, sheet metal offset U, and we've got this third drawing here, which is the fitting, the fitting. So what I like to do here with these is I like to uh, rearrange these onto a second web browser. So I've got a web browser here that has all three prints, print one, print two, print three. You could also download these, right mouse button, save image as. You could also download these and put them on your own computer in a format that's easy to get to. But I think this format's pretty easy to get to. So you got print one, print two, print three. Take all these, put them on your second monitor. We're gonna go here to uh, compete. And then this is gonna bring up the clock. It says, my country is Serbia. My CAD system is SolidWorks. And here is the clock, model one, model two, model three. So you just wanna remember when you're doing your run, this clock needs to be on screen. It needs to be visible so that you can go through and, and uh, create these models and everybody can see that you're using the clock and that there's, there's nothing fishy going on uh, with the clock. Cause we're gonna be using this clock to help you qualify for the tournament. We're gonna be using this clock to help seed the tournament. Um, you can hold control and scroll and that makes your web browser a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. So that's kind of a trick you can use to change the size of the clock. The only downside to that is that that also changes the size of these drawings over here on your second screen. So that might not work if you're using the same browser. Um, that might, you know, might be another reason to just download the prints and then work from the download. But uh, you can scroll the clock to make it a little smaller so that you can see everything on the screen so you can do your run um, and have the run approved. So now we're ready to complete, you know, this run of this first model here. Uh, here's the first model. What is the mass of this part in grams? It's an MMGS. It's using uh, 1060 aluminum for the uh, for the material. So I'm going to model this in just a minute. But, um, you know, you can look at this as many times as you want. And uh, after you look at it as many times as you want, you can come up with a game plan. So for me, what I'm going to be noticing is that the center line is symmetric here. So the center line is symmetric. Uh, so, you know, that's definitely gonna be where my origin is. And then there seems like there's a lot of dimensions like this 145 and this 125 and this 40 dimension. Seems like there's a lot of dimensions coming off the center of this region here. So that's probably where my origin is gonna be as well. So I'll probably just place my origin like right here at the center of that hole and right here at the center of the part. So now I've got the location of my origin. I think my first feature is gonna be this circular extrusion coming out to a depth of 85 millimeters. But one thing I've been doing a lot more lately in SolidWorks is I've been working through SolidWorks and including a lot more information in the first sketch. So I could actually probably include all this information in the first sketch, this circle here in the first sketch, this circle here in the first sketch, a rectangle representing the um, revolved shape here in the first sketch, and the rib here in the first sketch. I could probably include all that information in the first sketch, and then all I would really need to do is just this cut extrude for this rectangle from the top view, and then the counter bore here. And that's that's it. Like if I include all that information in the very first sketch, I could probably just do all of the subsequent work from that first sketch. And I've seen users in um, Onshape taking on a similar approach where they lay out a lot of information in that first model, in that first sketch. I've seen users in Fusion 360 take this approach. I've seen users in Inventor and in Katia take the same approach. So it seems like it's becoming a more and more popular approach to create one single sketch that has a ton of information in it, and then to use that sketch to create all the subsequent features. And I can certainly see why that is valuable. The only real downside is that if that sketch gets too massive, 
you're going to have a lot of trouble troubleshooting that sketch. It's going to be um, a little bit of a nightmare to troubleshoot that sketch. But I got to say, you know, having been inspired by some of the other users of different CAD systems, I've really started to kind of push the envelope of using that functionality in SolidWorks. And uh, I'm pretty happy with the results. So I'm going to give you a demonstration of that here in just a minute as well. what I'm doing my keystroke. I mean, it's not really that exciting. All you're really going to see is me spamming the S key. That's the most exciting part of all this, but now you get a chance to see me spamming the S key on this one. Here we go. Let's try this again. This, what's it called? This thing begins in three, two, one, go. <laughs> all right, here we go. Try this again. New part here, and this is in 1060 aluminum alloy, MMGS, front plane, begin to sketch, orient the view, S key circle, and this guy is going to have a diameter of 65. We're going to have an internal circle in there with a diameter of 30, I think, 35, 35. Control in the middle mouse button is your SolidWorks shortcut for pan. We'll bring a line over here. Come back. Touch the endpoint. I'm just going to include this radius right in this sketch. Maybe save some time there. Bring that up to bring this one across to 40. This helps when you, you know, when you do this thing a few times, it's going to be helpful because you're going to be able to, um, you know, kind of speed through it a little more. One thing to look out for there is that if I just kind of drop this here, it's just going to be coincident. But if I watch my cursor feedback, I can get it to the point where it has coincident and tangent in that one drop. And that saves you having to go back and make any other uh, adjustments to that. We're going to also remember that in SolidWorks, if you just click on this point here, you can assign a tangency relationship. So you don't have to click the the line and the point with control. Make sure that, that that line there is vertical and then you can define the gap here. Gap height is 10. Oh, actually that occurred automatically because of that two dimension. So we're good there. And then the overall distance here across is 145. Now we can go in and create a rectangle here. Um, this rectangle, we, I guess we do know the height, right? The height is gonna be 75 minus 10 minus 35 over two. <laughs> uh, maybe it's better just to dimension that one. <laughs> so we got this and then uh, we got a center line here. And then we also have a line coming down from here. And then we've got our uh, smart dimension here doubling across at 40 at 30. Um, we've got our distance here to the origin, which is going to be at 140, 125. And then we've got our height here to the origin, which is going to be at that 75. We've got our angle for this rib. So the angle here is going to be at 40 degrees. And then we've got our distance from the center of that circular boss to the rib at 60. And that should be it for our sketch on the front plane. Let's S key extrude. We're just going to pick this and this as our first extrusion profile. We'll take that out to a depth of 85. And then we'll right click in the background and say mid plane. And now we're going to show that sketch, show that sketch. And that way we can select uh, the geometry from that sketch and use that geometry to create another extrusion. So we could jump into an extrude here. Um, we could select just this contour. Whoops. Just this contour here. That's going to go out to a depth of 50. That's one of those little mistakes that if I would have just practiced it a couple times and been able to predict what's going on with that extrude when I picked that region, could have saved myself some time. Like here, if I right mouse button, select chain, hold control and pick the center line and then go up to features revolve, then SolidWorks will just pick the, the geometry that I want and save me those extra couple of clicks. Or like here, I know that I can start by clicking the rib command and then click on this contour and it picks everything. Well, that's not what I want. Or I could start by clicking this contour and then click the rib command. That's actually not what I really want either. Uh, so let's just click the rib command here. Um, so we're going to flip the direction of that one and we're going to say that rib is going to have a width of 10 millimeters. And there we go. There's our rib. And now we can go into the whole wizard command and we can say we want to use a counter bore. I like to go in here, uh, anti metric, and then I'll, I'll come down here and I'll say that I want to do a counter bore here with a um, custom sizing. And that way I can just use the tab key on my keyboard. So this is 12 tab, 24 tab, 6 tab. And then I go to positions. I'll click on this face to uh, tell SolidWorks I want the point to be on that face. And then I can just use this point here from that earlier sketch. And now the final sketch here, 
pick this face, begin to sketch, orient the view, and we're just going to do a center rectangle. And here we could say that we need this rectangle to be 20 by 80 because it's 40 in this direction. And then we can do extrude cut, right mouse button, through all, right mouse button. Final feature here is going to be these fillets. Remember, when you go into the fillet command, the, the radius of the fillet is the highlighted field in the beginning. So you can just immediately type the radius, pick the required edges, finish that one off, you know, do the final spin, make sure it all looks good. And then you can take a look at your sensors here. 1163 is the mass that I'm coming up with. That's the mass on the drawing. So boom, click here to finish model one and we're ready to move on to the next model. So um, the next model is the sheet metal model. I think I'm gonna save this one for another time. I think instead I'm gonna go to the final model here.